January 9th, 2008, post primary hangover. New Hampshire Liberty Alliance visits the legislative office building to continue their voicing opinions on legislation proposed by our legislators. First on the docket today is HB 1515, prohibiting at will employment and creating more state bureaucracy. In front of the Labor, Industrial, and Rehabilitative Services Committee. Now, there are two parts to this bill. One which seems intended to please workers, and the other which is clearly intended to increase the scope, power, and cost of government. I have no regard for the first, and I have stronger for the second. First, prohibiting at will employment. I've been an employee in an at will state, and many times I felt I was being treated unfairly. Does it follow, therefore, that I must hate at-will employment? Only if I blame it for the bad treatment. And I don't. The nature of the employer-employee relationship is unequal. That's the way of things. The law cannot change that. The only solution is to encourage small business, particularly sole proprietorships, by keeping regulation, paperwork, and taxes to a minimum. Next, in front of Children and Family Law, is CACR 23, providing that the state shall not abridge the right of parents to control the welfare and education of their children. Now that's a radical concept. The blue sheet is where you can register your opinion on a particular piece of proposed legislation. And the pink card is how you can actually voice that opinion in front of the committee if you feel that strongly about it. The entire history of jurisprudence can be set on its ear in one case. And I do not want to leave the people's liberty up to that vulnerability. Where would you, how would you intervene in something like that or you wouldn't, you just let it happen? I don't, I, I don't believe under Part one, Article four, of the state, Article four, freedom of religion. I can't. I don't have my constitution up before me, but we have a, an article dealing with freedom of religion, and as long as that religion is being practiced or taught, as the case may be, and does not infringe upon the public peace or the rights of others practicing their religion, they have the right to do it. No, I do not believe that the state has the right or the authority to intervene. Once it results in a criminal action, yes, they do. Supposedly unconstitutional law, and we did change it. Are you trying to raise the threshold for intervention? No. I am trying to state clearly in the Constitution which entity is in charge of the family, the parents or the state. We also have presidential candidates out there right now who are talking about universal preschool. And that troubles us um, on the other end of the spectrum uh, as homeschoolers, because our, our kids are in school from the day they're born, but we don't want to be told they have to go to preschool. And I think a question like that under the language um, of education, the word education in this bill, would go to the court interpreting this constitutional amendment um, and come out very reasonable. Let those people who want to be responsible be responsible and take the government barriers away or don't put any more government barriers up for those of us who want to be responsible. Thank you. In one sense, this bill is not necessary. In 1925, the U.S. Supreme Court uh, acknowledged mm -hmm. in, in a uh, Supreme Court case that it is the parental province to direct the education and the upbringing of children. You know, just because you disagree about how your child should be special educated, here to the state, you have the right to say, okay, we disagree, fine, we'll just pull her out and homeschool her. Um, I find it extremely disturbing that out of my extremely tiny caseload, uh, two of the cases that I've had recently have involved essentially DCYF uh, opinion that the parent wasn't making the right decision about the education or the welfare of their child. 
As a parent of two wonderful teenage daughters, I applaud a bill that will reinforce the basic right and duty that's always been very obvious to me since I decided to become a parent, that I am actually the person responsible for the upbringing and education of my own children. Risking some kind of punishment from the state, and as Attorney Gore may just reference, the, the biggest threat to a parent is that DCOF is going to come in and take away your children because they don't agree with how you're raising or educating them. Our comrade teachers were responsible not just for instruction in reading, writing, and arithmetic. They were responsible for ensuring that we would be good Soviets. They were responsible for ensuring that we did not become infected with any spiritual ideas that the party leadership deemed to be dangerous. I strongly believe that this simple, obvious language in the proposed amendment will provide a wonderful safeguard for my own child. Thank you, Madam Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Jack Lightfoot. I'm from Child and Family Services, and I'm here to ask you to oppose CACR uh, 23, 33, 23, uh, because we believe it will be very detrimental to the children of New Hampshire. If you think you need to raise parents' rights, raise the threshold, for example, for child abuse and neglect, then you're going to pass an amendment such as this. If, our, if you pass it, our parents can be given greater deference in raising their children, and at the very least, you're asking for years of litigation. If this amendment is not simple enough for most people to understand and to read, it's probably because government education does not work. And I have no intention of asking permission from the government how to instruct my children. And I want to make sure that, that the state of New Hampshire does not construe that as an excuse to, to raid my family and tell me how, how I ought to be living. And I know that there are families out there who's got a challenge with a child and the child gets mad at them and they end up reporting something to a school teacher that isn't true the next thing you know, you got DC way up down your throat. This is the reason for this piece of legislation because there's way too much government control and intrusion into the family. And it's time to put a stop to it. What the people say is constitutional, flat out is constitutional. The charge of Munchausen was supposedly dropped, but they were still taking me to court for abuse and neglect for saying that my son has a mental illness and unsafe behavior. They're also cashing my son's DC, uh, SSI checks because our own government found my son mentally disabled with conduct disorder, which is a very serious mental illness. And DCYF at the same time is cashing those checks, keeping my son into protective custody, where he's now been moved into an ISO home because of his behaviors. And at the same time, they're taking me to court for abuse and neglect for stating that my son has a mental illness and unsafe behavior. Really, do we want to be like like Russia was? Do we want to be like Germany was in the time of Hitler? This is where it's heading, and our families need to be protected. The state has lost its mission to reunify families, and instead they're tearing them apart. So please do something about this. Where's the slips? Thank you. Thank you. CACR 23 is a catastrophe because you are creating an absolute control for parents over the welfare and the education of their children. Some of the m uh, clearest things that would go, um, mandatory um, inoculations. That many people are being abused by the government by the other branches and individuals of government in government. That, isn't that the justification? Next up in front of the Judiciary Committee is HB 1347 establishing a committee to root out and remove dead wood from the RSAs. What a concept. Somebody was telling me down legislative services when they start, they had a shelf of, of books, statutes. Now they have a shelf and a half. There's got to be some cost savings in there somewhere. Another day in the life of a liberty activist. Come join us, nhliberty.org.